Hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to talk about crackle slips and why sometimes they crackle and then maybe three months later you go to do it and it doesn't work anymore. So uh, we'll figure out why it doesn't, why that happens and how to fix it. So this all occurred because I was trying to make this uh, uh, crackled little tea bowl with clear glaze on it and when I dipped into to the slip it was no cr crackling and it also dripped like that. That's sort of an indicator drip of deflocculated uh, glaze or slip. Uh, so, but I wanted it to do this. So here's what I'm going to show you is like these are these are the recipes. Here was the recipe I was using. It had a bunch of nephsi, a bunch of clay, kaolin, and some frit. So what's happening is this nephsi has soluble sodium in it. So it goes uh, into solution and will deflocculate your slip over time. So does this frit, 3110. That's slightly soluble in water and over time it will deflocculate both your glaze and your slip. Uh, here's a classic cone 10 recipe a lot of people use. Uh, and if you look at this, the only thing that's soluble is this borax. That's a sodium borate. And so over time that will deflocculate the slip. So what you're going to want to do, I'm going to show you an example here. Uh, let me go on this side. Here is a, here's a slip, and you can see how thick it is. It's pretty thick in there. So what I'm going to do is put some deflocculant in it. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because a lot of times people put a lot in. But I wanted to show you this is about 300 grams or so. And I'm going to start with one drop. I should probably get a teaspoon. Whoops, that's a big drop. But not very much, really. Okay, look at how that was. That was a really about two small drops and is totally deflocculated. You can see it swirling in there, marbling on the surface. And now when I dip my tile, look how watery it is. And how it has frozen drips like that. That's an indicator of deflocculation. Now, if I want to go backwards, I'm going to take this Epsom salt solution. And I usually use a brush like this so I can just get a couple drops. So we'll do one, two, three. Three small drops. And it's trying to go back, but it's still watery. Still marbly. So I'll do one, two, three. So that's five drops total. Still hasn't gone back. One, two, three. Three more drops. That's eight drops. Nine. Okay, now it's getting thick, see? It's, it's changed completely the way it is. There's no marbling, no anything. And if I even put another drop in, now it's getting even thicker, so I can keep going, but what I want to do is be able to get the crackly slip on there. And right there, just from that alone, you can see the difference in these two in the way that that applied. And rather than make you um, wait for that, <laughs> watching slip dry is not that interesting. Here's the thickened one. And here's the deflocculated one. This is actually very similar to uh, terra sigillata, which is a slip that we add deflocculant to, and we can apply it. It makes it apply much different, very thin. You apply it to greenware or bone dryware. Okay? So I hope that helps explain that. And what you should really do is try that for yourself, because once you start putting these deflocculants and flocculants in and trying to move a batch back and forth, it, you will it, uh, start to understand it rather than watching me do it. So you can even take, say, 300 grams of kaolin, just mix it with water, and then add a few drops of deflocculant, watch it thin out. Add a few drops of Epsom salts, watch it come back, and then you'll start to understand a little bit more about glaze solutions. All right, thanks very much.